Okay, we're going. Excellent. Okay, uh, well, welcome to Woodstock Trading Company's uh, Incense Little Discussions. I'm Seth, and we missed last month. We kind of felt bad about that, but we got snowed in. So it was okay. We had a nice day. We got work done around the house and all that kind of jazz. In fact, I think I work harder probably on our days off than I do when we're actually here. Certainly not as much fun. Anyway, uh, just to give you some little nuts and bolts, we are Woodstock Trading Company. Uh, our physical address, and we do have a physical store, so if you're in the Cherry Hill area, South Jersey, whatever, or even the Philly area, stop on by. Uh, it's 1880 Route 70 East, and we're in the town of Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08003. Um, if you want to call, whatever, we're open from 11 to 7. <clears throat> Monday through Friday, um, and Saturdays we open up at noon, we're here till 7, and Sundays are noon to 5, and our phone number is 856-424-6166, so give us a call, oh yeah we have uh, <laughs> amazing graphics, oh so professional, very high tech, uh, computer generated, whatever, graphics that really we're we're not even up to UHF standards so so anyway that's our website uh, UHF right forgot you kids don't know what that is um, anyway uh, that's our website also we're on Facebook so check us out on Facebook uh, we well you already know we're posting this it's gonna be on YouTube if you don't know already this is not where you're watching it um, if you have any questions or whatever, you know, certainly email us, call us, uh, put stuff on our Facebook page, whatever. I also, I'm blogging on Tumblr as well, and Woodstock's blogging as well, so keep an eye. We got... And blogger. Blo yeah, we're a bunch of bloggers. Uh, I still don't, I'm not used to the sound of that. It just sounds really unpleasant. Uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're high tech, so... <laughs> Uh, the first one we're going to do, it, it took me forever to figure out where I left off last time. I didn't get far last time, because so I had so much to say, like I do now, and so many so many fragrances I showed, but that's all right. I got up to number 33 last time, which was Satya Natural, so we're going to go to number 34. This is Shop White Sandal, and most of the ones I, that I had today to do, I really ha was very happy, because they weren't too terribly difficult. And some of these are amongst my favorites. Shroff White Sandal. I've been carrying this before, long before we actually had a number system. So this is one of the first incenses I carried. Uh, Shroff perfumers, they've been around a very, very long time. <clears throat> they've consistently produced really some of the most beautiful fragrances. They have a distinct quality. Very, most of Shroff's items are very gentle, very light very pleasant soft um, I went into a lecture before on the subject of how these incenses are made um, their incenses tend to be of the masala style you can go back and check out the other YouTube videos on how these things are made uh, which in a nutshell refers in the case of incenses usually dry solid ingredients or even wet solid ingredients um, kind of pulverized and mixed together with some kind of a usually water with a binder um, sometimes there's an accelerator in there to keep it burning but that's basically it uh, so straw white sandal uh, this is one of my favorite traveling incenses because it one it doesn't doesn't give off a lot of smoke and its fragrance is very very light and very very gentle it's very clean simple sandalwood slightly sweet not as smoky as some sandalwoods can be in fact we're gonna get to a very very smoky very dry or sharp sandalwood a little bit later but this one is slightly sweet um, sweeter than your average sandalwood Not what number is it? number 34 <laughs> shroff white sandal uh, I have to admit I've been inconsistent in using the preface, preface shroff on some of these incenses like amber rose or sometimes I don't remember if I listed it as shroff amber rose or amber rose that was number 8 anyway it also has a noticeable note of something I would describe as cinnamon like 
Sandalwoods tend to be either cooling or warming as a rule. This one is a very warming, gentle, hospitable, friendly sandalwood. That This is good for company. Um, in fact, I have another one we're going to talk about that's excellent for company. It's also not a bad... Oh, let me pass it around. Sorry. It's not a bad one for meal times. Um, because it does, it's not terribly perfumey, and it's not quite as balsamic, so not only as some sandalwoods can be. Um, this has kind of a culinary note about it. It is very, it is, it's, it's superbly balanced, as most shroff items tend to be. Um, very light, very gentle. This is a good sandalwood for people that generally don't care much for sandalwoods, because they're under the impression they're going to be very, very smoky. This one is not the case. Someone wrote to us mm. via email uh, that they were looking for a fragrance that would be good when he was studying. Oh. Would you consider yeah. something like this yeah. for studying? Uh, yeah, well, before I say yes, well, I already said yes. But, yeah, I would definitely say this is an excellent, studious <laughs> fragrance because it doesn't, it's not terribly obtrusive. It's not going to choke you. It's not going to give... That's the other thing. Headaches. Some people complain that some incenses give them headaches. Uh, those, more often than not, tend to be florals, but not always the case. They tend to be very strong, very perfumey fragrances. That's not the case with this. It's not terribly obtrusive or intrusive of really a fragrance. Really pleasant. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it cleans the air without hmm. kicking the door down. So, yeah, this is... This is good for study, any kind of study, um, musical study, hard science. I study a lot of hard science, so that's my background. So fragrances that work well with study are very important. Um, this one, uh, we're going to get to another group of incenses that are ideal for study and for meditative purposes. I would like to have that like after dinner, just mm -hmm. having some coffee and aperitif. And uh, also not a bad one for like... As just before you go to sleep, oh, um, so nice. it has a very calming effect. Some people like a more stimulating fragrance before they go to sleep because they, they're overtired and they need something to refresh them. Um, that wouldn't be the case with this. This sort of has a more of a relaxing quality. This is Schroff White Sand. Now, um, to show you some parallel items, I'm going to get in a little trouble, I guess, with this one because this is so new that it has a number, but we haven't corrected the number on the website yet. What number is this? Is, this is going to be number 29. Right now, something else is 29 that I can't get anymore. What, what did it say? What did it list as 29? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Whatever it was, 29, never mind. This is now 29. Uh, this is entitled Black Moon Sandalwood. Okay. Uh... Fairly generous, it's a nice, good, thick stick. It's almost, but not quite, a clone of Shroff White Sandal. Um, it's a little bit drier. Here, let me pass that around. It's very, 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 very new. Just so very similar. It doesn't quite have as much of the cinnamon note. It's a little bit drier, a little bit smokier. Uh, it's sharper. It's sharper, of course. Uh, a bit more stringent, but I, I suspect somebody may have been trying to create a clone of Shroff White Sandal and they came up with something fairly close. Um, if you like Shroff White Sandal, chances are you're going to like Black Moon Sandal as well. It's not a Shroff product. No, well if it is, um, it's not sold as such if it is. Uh, it is possible because um, some Shroff items are becoming available in large bundles, 250 gram or larger bundles. Uh, Shroff Green Durbar being one of them that soon I'm going to have packaged in my pa packages, which does bring up a bit of a tangential point. Uh, I've been asked about some of the incenses that come packaged in commercial packages uh, they'll often see, like Nak Champa, perfect example, they'll also see wrapped up in our little cellophane packs as well. What's the difference? Uh, usually none. 
many of these are things that I can either uh, I can only either buy in very large packets and I have to break them down into smaller ones or sometimes you get a little more bang for your buck if I buy it in larger packets and break it down into smaller ones such as super hit something like that some people also just for whatever reason prefer to see our packaging um, to kind of uh, blow our horn in a way I think our packaging is probably superior to most commercial packaging uh, most commercial packaging is either paper or even worse uh, plastic uh, paper offers little protection or longevity for a fragrance and plastic really isn't much better because the oils will pass through plastics like they're not even there also it's plastic uh, our packaging is cellophane this is made from scrap wood usually cottonwood and it is an excellent oil barrier so any of the oils essential oils in the fragrances stay in there it also allows moisture to pass in and out so it's not going to get musty or moldy and it's biodegradable in fact my manufacturer the, the guys that manufacture these tell me these packets which was not easy to find they explained to me don't order more than what you may use in about a six month period of time they're so biodegradable that after six months they're starting to break down already so i have to i try and order these about every six months if they hang around too long they actually will begin to fall apart so they're very biodegradable good and bad so that's a side note just wanted to, to do that oh since we're talking side notes Dragon's Blood Resin. I oh just got in Dragon's Blood Resin. Uh, oh cool, welcome aboard. Yeah, oh, yeah, nice. Good, good. Um, I just got back in Dragon's Blood Resin. I didn't have any for a few months, and it was a little bit uh, concerning as to whether I was going to be able to find Dragon's Blood Resin again. Uh, there was one company that was selling it in powdered form. But I don't trust it in powder form because I don't know what's in the powder. Could be brick dust. Yeah. You know, really. I mean, I've I've experienced that one time where I bought powdered dragon's blood, and well, one I, I don't know what it is, and so I put on a charcoal and lit it, and some of it burned, and most of it didn't. So it was it was garbage. It was, so fortunately, I didn't buy a lot of it. So you learn. Uh, we were, you know. We were reviewing, uh, we start off with Shroff White Sandal, is where we kind of begun. And I'll just give you this real quickly and you'll kind of be able to catch up with us. Alright, this is item number 34 in our little list. And it's a warm, clean, slightly sweet sandalwood. Uh, not as smoky or sharp as most sandalwoods can be, or have the reputation of being. It's not as astringent. And it has a little bit of a sweet note to it, something warm like cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Maybe even something a little bit like cardamom, perhaps. Cardamom pots. So, anyway, and I was showing some parallel items. One of which What's being. The name of it? That was Shroff White Sandal. We were just we were kind of Fact catching them up. And then we mentioned uh, this one here Black Moon Sandalwood, Black which. Moon. I suspect somebody may have been trying to copy Shroff White Sandal. Yeah. They're trying to create a clone. And it came up with something really very exciting. It's a, not quite as sweet. It's a little obviously drier. This is item number 29. It's a new 29. It's not on the list. It's a brand new, brand, brand new item. I'm going to show another super brand new item next. So we're showing kind of parallel things. So people that like Shroff White Sandal very often would like this of course I can't say that scientifically yet because this is so new that maybe only about 10 or 15 people have actually had tried it yet same goes maybe even fewer in fact, you might even be the first people outside of the store to sample this uh, is it on the list? not yet huh? this is going to be number 184 uh, red rose sandalwood and I suspect that somebody was trying to also copy another Shroff item, I think. 
if it isn't by Schroff themselves, and they're just making new fragrances. Um, it's very similar to Schroff Amber Rose. Number, that was number eight, but this is number 184, Red Rose Sandal. Um, which we'll bring up, you know, I should show it now then. Talk about Red Rose. Oh, yeah, Red Rose Sandal. Uh, very similar to Schroff Amber Rose, also very light, very dry, very clean, soft fragrance. Um, it does have a rose petal note. It's not as rosy as... So, you know, the name would imply it's not a rose oil, it's a rose petal. A little bit like green tea sort of thing going on. Uh, it's reminiscent. In fact, I just think I saw a packet. I'll show this now. I didn't think I was going to. It's something, an item that reminds me of that. <laughs> going to the wizard bag. <laughs> I don't even know if I have any here. I really hadn't planned on showing it. What's the name? Uh, Rangetsu. I was going to show. It just oh here, good. Wow, very similar. I never noticed that before till now. The it's always getting that first one out. <laughs> That's a Japanese. Program. This is a Japanese incense. This company, very prestigious manufacturer. They manufacture one of the most famous of incenses of all, Shoranko. Which is a favorite of Alan Watts. Don't even look for that on the list. Cardigan Watts. Oh, fiendishly expensive. It's truly amazing. Uh, so this is this. You'll notice some similarity. It's almost like a almost a clone to this. It's just a lighter version of this rose petal green tea, kind of a slight roasted smell to it. A little bit of cardamom. Not as much as this, which is no surprise. This is an Indian incense. That's Japanese. So you're not going to get quite as intense a fragrance. I see a lot of difference with the stick, too. It's oh, yeah. It's just all stick. The way it's made, the way it's constructed. Very nice. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, which does bring up another point, its construction, and many people's frustration with the fact that Japanese incenses do not have a bamboo core, much like Tibetan incenses and Chinese jaw sticks and other things. That led us to evolve, you know, our incense burners that we've been creating. It's become more than just a hobby. It's actually become kind of a passion for us that um, before the bottoms of these burners that, that we throw, there was no hole on the, on the very bottom. So in this, these sticks burn all the way down to the nub. Mm -hmm. It would leave... A, a little roach in there, you know, yeah. and I couldn't get it out, and I was digging at it with a pin or whatever. So now we make sure that the hole stays open on the bottom. And that's a, it's more difficult than it sounds. It wants to fill up with glaze, yeah. so I have to plug the hole and put wax all over this. It's a real scene, and sometimes it still fills up with glaze. When you burn the Japanese incense. Should you put a plate or something under it just in case it burns all the way down? No, or it, does it snuff once it, out? Once it, yeah, once it hits the ceramic, it, it'll go out. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to go any further. Usually, heck, you can even take an inc most incense sticks and you just lie them on a surface, they'll go out. Right. You know, their, their requirements for O2 are pretty high. So that helped us kind of create these incense burners. And every time you discover one, you know, you solve a problem... You, you unveil another problem. So these took, I don't know, about four or five years before we worked out all the bugs. And of course, you know, new bugs keep showing up, of course. Yeah. But, but it's, a, it's a great process. And it's fun. Work on the pottery wheel. I recommend it. Uh, since we mentioned Amber Rose, okay, with that last one, this is Amber Rose. see we're being joined here by one of our four-legged friends down here and I wonder if he's gonna want to jump up on the table we're hoping not that's Muggsy he's Amber Rose number eight a... I might have listed it as Shroff Amber Rose yeah, like I, I said I'm very inconsistent that way so you know what here we'll relight this this is the red I do like red, this. red rose sandal 
So you'll notice now again a similarity between th that, this, and the rangetsu that I just showed you. Rangetsu is, yeah, it's, it's a much subtler fragrance. So now you can see where I'm thinking that either somebody was trying to create a clone of Amber Rose, or it's made by the same manufacturer, and they haven't, you know, and they just gave it a new name. We're overwhelming you. Good. Yeah. Good. Oh, there he goes. That was Muggsy, right? You didn't see him. He was off camera. He shies away from the camera. Sometimes. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so you see kind of what we're trying to do is we're trying to create kind of a profile. So if, if you start with one of these fragrances, like Shroffwat Sandal, there's some other ideas. Uh, oh, since we're on this other subject of brand new things, Stardust. Another non sequitur. We're going to mention Stardust. Did we get it back? No. Uh, we're temporarily out of Stardust and mentioning it now. But here's the good thing about being out of the stuff. One, it, it makes it forces me to place an order for more. What that then did is I've been, become aware of a sister product of Stardust um, that is spectacular. Oh, Muggsy's back. Spectacular. Um, we don't know what it's called yet, but I got sent a sample, and it uh, it harkens back to there's a style of dupe incense. They look like these handmade little logs, these sort of yellowish amber colored little logs that they were so rare and so hard to get. There was one store that I could only find them in, and they're been, they've been gone for twenty something years, and it's almost identical to these little dupe logs, this sort of saffron sandalwood something earthy a little bit sweet going on we don't know what it's going to be called it's i'm trying to nail them down but it's either going to be called they don't know themselves it's going to be called deep forest or forest deep and i don't know which of those they're going to use so it'll be forest deep or deep forest absolutely amazing i got sent a sample i'm so thrilled with it uh, since we mentioned earthy fragrances that brings us, we're skipping 35, so just want you to know. For a reason, it's just a difficult situation with that one, because it was supposed to be something else, and I ordered, it was a Tibetan incense, I ordered it, and the company I ordered it from sent me something different, so we're going to skip that, and Tibetan incenses are very difficult to do this way anyway. Um, I'm shying away from the Tibetan incenses, I'm copping out. You'll get there. Um, this is 35, Kesari Deluxe. Uh, sometimes I'll misspell it as Kesari with an I at the end. If I do, sorry, forgive me. Kesari refers to saffron. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, it's not quite the saffron, you know, you make paya, everybody, you know, that very distinctive smell. But if you're not sure what it is, you're not sure if you like it. Because if you smell saffron without knowing it's saffron, you'd be wondering, what's that strange chemical smell? Mm -hmm. sort of smell has an odd chemical smell. It's a different kind of saffron. It's not what most people think of as like the classic Spanish saffron. Um, Kesar incenses are very earthy, slightly musty, a little bit smoky, a little bit sweet. Um, but you mentioned study. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I, it's kind of a maybe a subconscious thing but it's an interesting musty smell to Kesari incenses that is reminiscent of old books yeah. or if you've ever been to a used bookstore are there used bookstores? I guess there are used bookstores still people I'm going to ask if there are record people stores people don't even know, know. what books, books are anymore <laughs> a used Kindle store um <laughs> But, or if you've, if you've ever been to a record store, a used record store, old vinyl, rec, you know, the, the, the jackets, the very distinctive kind of musty, cooling smell. And Kasari incenses, I used to have about three or four really great Kasari incense. One, uh, if anybody out there can find this, tell me, I'll love you for it. Uh, 
from a perfumer called Padma, P-A-D-M-A, Padma Kasari. That incense has been adopted by predominantly transcendental meditators. They, they, it's their fragrance. It's like their mascot of fragrances. And I, had, I really didn't know. And I had it in the store. And one fellow came in and he was really thrilled to find it. He bought like a dozen packs. I was like, which was all I had. So I reordered another dozen. And then somebody else came in and said, I heard you have Padma Kasari. I'm like, wow, really? And he's like, so he, he bought the dozen that I had. He would have bought more if I had. And I ordered three dozen. And then it's like a joke. And then the next time. So I didn't realize, but I tapped into a whole community of transcendental meditators who were looking for that. Now it's moot because I can't find it. And I can't even find one pack. And I found it by accident then. Um, so right now, I'm, this is as close as we can get to Padma Kasari. If anyone leads us in the direction, we would be happy to yeah. carry it. And once again, email us at WTC at WoodstockTradeCo.com or private message us on Facebook, uh, Woodstock Trading Company, because we would really love to supply it to yeah. our customers. Your kindness will be rewarded. Um, sometimes it's listed as like Eastern fragrance, just these weird other designations. You just come in these little butter paper rolls and very primitive, very simple. I had that earthy, musty fragrance. Um, and we'll show you some other things that if you like that, um, the other one I used to have was actually a company called Radio. I don't know how they got their name, but it was called Radio. Radio brand special saffron. I used to get that all the time. And that was the second best. Um, I'm going to show you this. I sus I think I know who manufactures this. I think this might be this, like Cetal. We have another one simply called Cetal. Very close to it's the House of Spice. It used to have an incense they simply called uh, oh this is saffron sandal um this is actually i think i've listed a sandal saffron I'm, i forget how it was listed uh it's number 85 on the hit parade uh, house of spice used to have this almost identical fragrance simply listed as chandan which just means sandalwood but there's a lot more going on I'm sorry? Saffron Sandal. Saffron Sandal. Number 85. Number 85. Um, also kind of cool, slightly damp smelling. Um, it's an interesting, almost kind of Floridian smell. You can almost smell like something, a little ozone. Uh, very, very clean. If you like sweet incenses, this won't work. This is for people who like drier, lighter, cleaner fragrances, not floral you know any of those things so it's an excellent kind of it's good in basements because you know basements themselves kind of have a natural sort of musty quality about it so if you try and fight it then you're going to end up with some strange mutant funk that's just not going to work um, so if you go with it there's a hotel we used to go to in miami the basement i don't even know if it's still there the dovo is that where the uh, ice skating rink was i don't remember but the the basement floor of it first floor of it uh, which opened right onto the beach. It smelled just like this. Uh, it's kind of spooky. Oh, it's there. It's now part of South Beach. They just is it? Yeah, they renovated uh, everything. Uh, renovated. Okay. I wouldn't recognize it. No. Um, you know what? I'm going to show you another Kasari type. Um, this is. Let's see. I have it. Number seventy-six. Mandala. Uh, Originally, it was Sinduri Delight. If you turn the Wayback Machine back to probably, I don't know, 65. Is it? Uh, this 70s. is number 76, Mandala. Okay. Then this would have been Sinduri Delight, but you probably couldn't get it in America. Uh, David Barr imported this um, and packaged it under the Excelsior label as uh, a mandala it's another saffron containing sandalwood very dry very light very clean soft uh, it's not quite as musty a fragrance as the other was for example the Kassar deluxe um, it's difficult to pinpoint you know the nature of this fragrance very again it's light dry slightly smoky slightly astringent um, 
it's balanced with a sweet note of that saffron in there. Um, it's very, very good. This is, this is also a very good meditative fragrance. Maybe that's why it's called mandala, perhaps. Um, it's an introspective fragrance. Uh, it's, like Japanese incenses, uh, this is one that you can kind of enjoy passively. And it just kind of fits into the background like really nice wallpaper. And it does its job so well, sometimes you don't even notice it. Uh, like a good drummer or bass player. Okay, sometimes they do that, or a roadie. Uh, but you can also be more thoughtful and actively perceive these fragrances, particularly this one. Because there's something else going on in there that, you know what, I'm going to get to another one maybe later that some kind of a vanilla note also going on in there, a subtle vanilla note that I might get to when I show Neil Amber if we get that far. Um, mandala. Anyway, so originally Sindori Delight, he packaged it as a Mandala. Then I couldn't get that line anymore for quite some time. But, so I had it packaged. I knew it was the same thing. I got it in bundles called Sindori Delight. With his permission at the time, I repackaged it as Mandala. It was pretty amicable. Now, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to show one last one in this category. And we were talking about musty fragrances. And uh, this is one that I hesitantly show. Because? Well, it is genuinely bizarre. All right. It, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I think it's an amazing incense. Um, Muggsy's climbing over there. Um, it is absolutely bizarre. If you like musty fragrances, uh, I will say, if we have any real tea connoisseurs out there, there's a type of tea that this is very similar to called puer, or poly puer, and it's earthy, very earthy. Puer tea is almost like drinking liquid dirt, kind of. It sounds terrible, but it's actually wonderful. Uh, this is Hina. This is number 240, 264. Excuse me, 264. I have another incense called Hina. Spelled different. This is H-E-E-N-A. I have another one, H-I-N-A. Um, <clears throat> it is one of the strangest incenses I have. Uh, I think it's just fantastic. I think it's wonderful. It's not something I would like for company unless I really knew them. Um, this is very esoteric. I, I hesitate to use the word sophisticated fragrance, but it's kind of hampery. I don't, you don't know. All right, I can see your face. Right it's okay. I enjoy it. It, it. It's it's kind of hampery and basementy, and uh, if you've ever, it's kind of boggy, almost smelling. I guess it's not like low tide or anything like that. You know, it doesn't smell like overcooked kale or any of those kind of things. Uh, but it's it's very damp, earthy. It's like loam. If you've ever turned loam over, you know, or dug in wet soil, you know, it smells. Or clay. If you've ever done any pottery, sometimes you get a bag of clay. It can kind of smell like this. I think I think there was uh, some mattresses in summer camp. Yeah. I think that smells. I I know I'm not painting a pretty picture. I know I know. I'm not selling it very well but if you do actually like these cool earthy musty fragrances Hina is number 264 something to think about it's a real departure uh, it's very inexpensive it's a dollar fifty you get a nice big bundle you know packet of the stuff like this uh, it's not for everybody if ah, you know it's just something I like to throw out every now and then and just get reaction um, if you like florals or sweet fragrances or any of those kind of things, definitely avoid the Hina. But if you do like the, the musty smells, you'll be amazed. Or if you like Pu'er tea, if you like Pu'er, and you'd like to fill the air with the smell of Pu'er, then... Fragrances like that, if you have gotten like mosquito bites or have eczema, and you feel the coolness and the dampness of the earth, it's very soothing 
for people who are having some kind of skin uh, kind of problems. Okay, interesting. An aromatherapeutic value. It has really Ooh. that coolness of the earth. Um, we have number 37 next. We're going to move on. Um, I don't know how you follow that act. That's a real wild one right there. Mm. Uh, this one, in its name itself, is a bit um, odd. This is Chandan 777. How do we have it listed? We have it listed as Chandan 777. It's also listed, it can be listed as Chandan 666. And I suspect that there was some numerological misunderstanding between cultures and... It's Chandan 777. 777. Okay, this is usually the way I find it. Sometimes I will find it as Chandan 666. Some claim that they're different incenses. I've not found that to be the case. Uh, I find them to be the same. I think, I suspect they're packaging it sometimes as 777 because they just want to avoid the number 666. It's again, it's a, 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 you know, a theological misunderstanding, I suppose. Now, this is another sandalwood, as Chandan implies. Completely unlike the first batch of Chandans that we showed, like the straw white sandal and those. This is a very primitive, very smoky, much, much simpler. I mean, some people will actually use the term a lower grade sandalwood, which is kind of objectifying something that is purely subjective. Very primitive, very smoky, sharp, a little bit. Um, nice, thick, chunky sticks. You get a nice amount, actually, for two bucks. Uh, it's actually inexpensive enough and smoky enough to use outside if you want. But I have, when we get closer to spring, I'm going to bust out these smoke sticks that we have. They're really, really good for keeping away bugs. Uh, in New Jersey, our mosquitoes are, you know, they're a tougher breed. But... So it's very austere, very dry, very light, not perfumey, it's not sweet, it's a straight up Would you recommend sandal. it for company? I suppose, I see if I had company, I would go with the white sandal. Because it's a bit friendlier of a fragrance, it's not as astringent, not as sharp. Um, I think it's a more hospitable fragrance. And um, if you're going to be having dinner guests you want to not overpower the fragrance of it the is smoky stuff. it is very smoky some people just don't care for the smoke some people react to the smoke um they're thicker sticks and so it does put out a decent amount of smoke um, but it's not a highly perfumed smoke it's very very light smoke um very similar to it is size sandal uh this is number 15. also very, very, very dry, very primitive, very simple, straight up sandal. It's actually much sharper, really. Um, it were, it's very reminiscent. There, there were these incenses I used to be able to get. Ciro was, a, I believe, the manufacturer. It's Ciro Flower, Ciro Deluxe. Uh, Ciro Flower, I believe it was, had a cult-like following. And people would buy, there were these tiny little sticks, these little packets for like a buck. There was one gal who would order six dozen of them at a time. And it has, one of the things you'll notice in its sharpness, a faint metallic note, for lack of a better way of describing it. If you've ever been around people who work in machine shops or who cut keys or any of those kind of things, there's a distinctive metallic smell that follows them. Um, and this has some of that going for it, for lack of a better way of describing it. It's, a, it's surprising, you know, really, what kinds of fragrances people secretly like. Some things that objectively you wouldn't think of as being, you wouldn't think of as being pleasant fragrances or things that people would like. And as we kind of have grown up over the course of our lives, we have certain associations with certain smells. And because of these associations, we kind of like them. 
And so sometimes like an odd smell, like the smell of like metal filings or what have you, it's like, I've always liked that smell. And people are like, really? And it's, it's quite astonishing. Um, something else going on in there, almost like if you ever smell dry corn husks, you know, if, I'll have you smell that again. The smell of dried corn husks or tatami mats when they're really new will have a certain that corn husk smell like hay or straw. It's kind of autumnal. Okay. And it, it's going on in there as well. It's Every time I do these little discussions, I know this stuff. I never noticed before because normally I'm not sitting and really analyzing these fragrances very carefully. I'm enjoying them more passively. But now I'm having more time to really think about these. Um, yeah, right? Straw. The straw, corn husk, kind of yeah, uh, interesting. Like yeah. Um, now these next two... Not 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Oh, poopy. All right, we'll show you. <laughs> Pardon the outburst. <laughs> oh, poopy. <laughs> Language. That is not an incense. I know, right? Oh, although we could dung, do some. Dung is cats. not an unusual ingredient in some incenses. Um, after it's sat in most of the stuff that's easily biodegradable by bugs and stuff, sometimes there's this pulpy material like horse poo. Mm -hmm. You know, after horse poo sits. It sort of forms kind of like a like a pulp. It's almost like wood pulp, and it's not that unusual of an ingredient in some incenses, particularly Tibetan type incenses. What about tobaccos? Um, well, um, camel dung has been used to cure certain kinds of tobaccos, particularly in Syria, um, places like that. It's you know. What about a good fragrance for the cat? Aries. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, that's a whole, we could do a whole show. On cat. What do you think, next, next? We could, anybody okay. interested in cat? A uh, deodorizing? You know, okay, cat, and like, uh, if you have cat boxes, yeah. maybe we can, if we don't make it the whole show, I promise, um, our next one, since we're on the subject, uh, is going to be April 17th, it's going to be our next discussion, just so you guys know. Uh, we'll, we'll post on Facebook, you know, next week, it's going to be... <laughs> countdown to the next incense talk uh yeah you know what we'll make that at least a segment if we don't make that the whole show and how to deal with different you know malodorous you yeah. know problems in the home because sometimes even just cooking, cooking. Yeah. not just you know the cat's products <laughs> um yeah you know what we'll, we'll, we'll bring that up anyway i was going to mention this one here doesn't have a number i know i get in trouble for this uh, this is from a series. It, it's not a joke. They're actually called Thai Stick. Because they're sticks from Thailand. Mm -hmm. No other reason, I guess. Are you going to give it a number? I don't know. If, I, <laughs> if you want it, call us, whatever, you know, or email us that you're interested. <laughs> this is Thai Stick Sandalwood. There's, a, there's about 12 of them. I don't have any of the patchouli left. Uh, I haven't been able to get is it. Is this now. is this one of the ones that are ten cents a stick? Ten cents a stick. Ten they're cents a, a stick. Yeah, they're in a little box, so if you want, <laughs> you can order them if you want. Ten cents a stick. Call Doctor Seth. Yeah, for the no number. They, 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 has no heart. Has no number. No soul. No number. Just call eight five six four two four six one six six and say, Hey, Doctor Seth, give me some of them. It, it's my fault. Tie sticks. I haven't. As long as nobody else is listening on the phone. So it's also a very dry, very simple, basic, solid sandalwood um, that, you know, if you like, Tundon777 slash 666. You know, this is something that you would also like. I'll show you With one no last number. I'll show you one that, last that one. That incense has two, two numbers and this has none. Well, actually, it's That's three. Chandan777 666. It Twelve. has three Six. numbers. Because it's um, also number 37. Now, these numbers cause problems because, like, I have one, um, i trying to remember, nine, it was um, Nirvana, 977. But that's just the number, you know, and it was, but it's not our number. And it was um, 980 Select. I don't have 980 incenses yet. 
if I do reach that number, I will assign 980, select the number 980. Was there an instance that you were going to show if we had time? One? There was a special one you, you put on the slide. Uh, well, I was going to show Neil Amber, but I really, that's for a different, to compare it to another instance. Mm -hmm. But you know what, since we're doing these sandalwoods, any excuse to show this one off. Oh, I love that. Uh, one of the reasons I, I I really like to show this off for these discussions is once once I've once I open the pack, it's ours. We'll give you guys some samples. So we have samples for people who are here with us, and so you can have some of those. Once I light one of these, once I open the pack, it's ours, and we probably, I think we might burn more of this than we actually sell. Um, it comes in these silly little boxes. Uh, they used to be a, like a pulp paper box. Now they're much fancier. Uh, this is my source Sugandhi, they're Chandan Dupe, Chandan Sandalwood Dupe, referring to incenses that don't have a bamboo core in them. So there are these little little logs that, if you use cone incenses, you pretty much can use them the way you would cone incenses. Uh, I use the little bump in the middle of these incense burners, there's a little bump in the middle that has a hole in it, and I'll just sit it right on top of there, or just I'll just set them in a... Cat litter. Yeah, cat litter, rock salt, sand, whatever. I save ashes from the incenses, so I use the ashes. It's sort of like our little ghetto incense burner. Like when we're on the road, we'll just bring like, we'll get like an, I make bowls and cups and other things in ceramics besides these burners, so I'll, I'll make like a cup or a bowl and I'll fill it with sand or whatever. Yeah, we've used, uh, Cat food tins. Oh, when we're when we're traveling, we'll use anything, tuna tins, whatever we have. Yeah, they take a little bit to light. Up uh, when you first light them, as you can see, gives off a lot of smoke. So that kind of eases up once the whole top of it is lit. Um, they do give off a decent amount of smoke. Uh, not despite it, they're not terribly strong. They're fairly light. They're a little bit sweet. They might, you might find they're similar in some way to the white sandal, but they don't quite have that cinnamon note. They more of a, see, I want to show kasturi chandan, more of that vanilla kasturi kind of fragrance. They don't. I don't think they use real kasturi in this. Real kasturi is, it's from an animal. It's actually, a, it's like a musk from an animal. It's, I think it's like by. I know it's going to sound weird. I think it's like by the anal glands of some kind of beaver-like animal or something, and it's castori. And it's not an uncommon ingredient in perfumes. Okay, good. In perfumes, and actually confection. So you'll see castori sometimes listed in vanilla candies or vanilla confections or vanilla creams. And if it's real castori, then it's actually an animal product, believe it or not, weird as they seem. Uh, now that I lit this, let's see where I'm going to put this, because yeah. it doesn't it doesn't go out so easily here. Uh, Just put a little water. Yeah, I got water. That's true. Put it in the so that might not put it out. We'll see. It always breaks my heart to put these things out. But that's okay. I'll relight it. Might not go out. Put it in your your bowl. Might not go out. Anyway, um, since we have then the time, this is. Another sandalwood dupe. Did I mention the number on that one? Number 68, by the way. Uh, the Chandan dupe. This is another sandalwood dupe that I ended up getting accidentally. I didn't order it. They sent it to me. And I'm really kind of glad. Because I never would have thought to order it. So fans of Chandan 777 also tend to like this. This is... It's from... BIC or BIC is the corporation or company. It's simply their sandalwood dupe. Has no number. There are these little packets like these little guys, little thin skinny noodles of sandalwood. With some kind of sparkly crystals on them, the nature of which I am not certain of. I think it's amber. And they have no number. So you have to call or email for these. They're like a dollar for one of these little guys. And very dry again. Light, slightly austere does have an amber note to it, so I think the little crystals on there are amber. Um, I see, I don't want to start a whole new, a whole new one, so do I have any one thing to show off then? Well, 
you know what? Here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to show you where we're going to pick up next time if we don't do a whole show on the cat box. Kasturi Chandan, since we mentioned Kasturi. Is it real Kasturi in this? I don't know. The unburned sticks very distinctive smell. They remind me of, I think, it's kind of lemony almost, or bergamot-like, the unburned sticks. Bergamot, um, if you ever had Earl Grey tea, smell of Earl Grey tea. That's what bergamot, that's, Earl Grey tea is defined by bergamot. But when it's lit, it's a totally different creature. Uh, also, it's, it's sweet, warm, gentle, but completely unlike the white sandal. This is more of a vanilla, kind of anise, cardamom, you know, that sort of fennel -y anise, but it's not, like, not as harsh and strong as black licorice kind of smell. Um, very, very soft, very sweet. Oh, you got a you got a nose full. Yeah, it's I'm trying okay. To yeah, clear it out. Some people actually use uh, coffee grounds. They say if you it clears your nose, no, no. if you smell coffee grounds, and it it's like when people taste things, they take a piece of bread. We're almost out of time. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're almost. Anyway, this is Kasturi Chandan. This is wonderful, hospitable. This is great for company also. Uh, is it good for meals? I guess it's a little bit perfumey for meals. I would think, but. Depends what you're serving. If you're serving Indian food, then certainly, you know, this would work beautifully. Now I can relight this. I try not do if it's going to relight. So anyway, uh, our next one, uh, April 17th, uh, we're going to decide what we want to do, I guess. If we want to do a whole thing on the cat box <laughs> or just make it a segment. Um, join us. It's going to be at 530. If you want, you can call us, 856-424-6166. And check out our website and check out our Facebook page and all that jazz. And I'm blogging from time to time and all that. So we'll see you next time. Cool. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. All right.